Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. As we move further into fall, horse owners are learning about a virus called equine infectious anemia that can cause some serious problems for their animals. We begin today with SUNUP's Curtis Hare, talking with OSU Extension equine specialist, Dr. Chris Heine, to see what's going on. So we've actually seen a little bit of an uptick um, in positive cases reported in Oklahoma for equine infectious anemia. Uh, it's not like it's an epidemic. I think we've had five confirmed cases this year, but on average years, we only have one. So it is something just to kind of uh, pay attention to and to make sure horse owners have on their radar. So what exactly is equine infectious anemia? So unfortunately, um, EIA or equine infectious anemia does not have any treatment, cure or vaccine. So that's why it's kind of problematic. So um, essentially how we've tried to eliminate EIA is by identifying horses that are positive for the virus and then essentially removing them from the population or uh, eliminating from them being any risk to other horses. So how is it actually spread? How do, how do horses actually get this virus? So this is a, a virus that spread via mechanical transmission. And so when we talk about other um, viruses like uh, West Nile or um, Eastern or Western equine encephalitis, those are spread by insects. Well, EIA is also spread by insects, but in this case, the virus isn't essentially hiding inside of the insect. It's taking a ride from the mouth parts that have used to pick up that blood meal. So essentially, if a horse, or it's sorry, if a fly feeds on a horse and it's got infected blood, when it flies to the other horse, it injects it into them. So when we talk about mechanical transmission, that means insects aren't the only way to actually transmit this virus. So also needles, dirty tubing, et cetera, shared equipment that may have blood on it can also transfer between horses. So you mentioned that there's no vaccine and there's no real treatment for this disease. So when it comes to prevention, what are some things that you can do other than kind of like separating, you know, infected animals from non-infected animals? Yeah, essentially. So our, our way to prevent it is actually, again, identifying who may be a carrier. So that is why when we travel with horses or intermingle horses, we're all supposed to have a negative Coggins test. So that is this annual uh, blood draw that is sent off to a, a lab to confirm whether or not the horse has EIA. So as long as your horse is clean and he's around other clean horses, then we really don't worry about being at risk. Um, it's when horses are not tested um, and are positive and are intermingled with other groups, that's where we can actually have trouble. So when it comes to symptoms and what this virus actually does to the horse, what, how does that work? So essentially the, the trouble with EIA is that horses can um, get so anemia pretty severely and acutely and so actually can die from it. We can also have horses that sort of are chronic carriers where essentially they'll have bouts of this where they're not really doing very well um, so that it kind of comes and goes and then you can also have some asymptomatic carriers. But again, because there's no vaccine, no cure, the really the only way to keep it out of the population by spreading is identifying those that are positive and eliminating the risk from those horses. So like iron supplementation just doesn't work at all. No, no, this is um, essentially they're destroying the blood cells. The virus does that. And, and yeah, nope, you can't supplement your way out of this one. And I think at the end of the day, you know, one great way to really prevent this from getting into your horses is just practicing good biosecurity. Yeah, absolutely. So the big thing we always say is you cannot share um, equipment that carries blood between horses, right? So we, that's why we don't share needles with horses, tubing, even um, uh, dental equipment that may have blood on it needs to be cleaned before it's used on the next horse. All right, thanks, Chris. Chris Heine, Extension Equine Specialist here at Oklahoma State University. And if you'd like some more information on equine infectious anemia, go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu.